Good morning. My name is Penny Lay and welcome to St Thomas Church at Home. As we join together with you online to worship God, to learn from Jesus and to pray for the world and for one another. Today our service is Holy Communion and later on in the service we will break to that part of the service. But first we're going to start with our first hymn. So it's over to our music group. Thank you for leading us in that lovely song. So we come to a time of confession. And the response is, Lord have mercy, then Christ have mercy, and Lord have mercy. So let's just come to a prayer time. Christ came in humility to share our lives. Forgive our pride. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ came with good news for all people. Forgive our silence. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ came in love to a world of suffering. Forgive our self-centeredness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we're going to go over to Kenny, who's going to bring us our reading today. Our reading today will be taken from John chapter 12, from verse 20 to verse 33. Now there, was, there were some Greeks amongst those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a, seed, a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will also be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it and heard it say it was thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, The voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I'm lifted up from the earth from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. This is the word of God. Thank you, Kenny, for bringing us our reading. And today we're very fortunate to have Lee with us, who's going to bring us the Word of God. So thank you, Lee. Well, good morning, dear family at St Thomas's and everyone else watching this morning. It's great to be here with you. My name is Lee and I'm the youth and children's worker from St Mary's and I just feel so honoured and blessed to be able to bring um, God's word and our talk to you this morning. So before we begin, let's just have a moment of quiet. Let's just still our hearts and our minds as we pray to God. Father God, we just ask for your word to be heard this morning in ways that you know each of us need to hear it. We thank you for your holy Bible, for your spirit-breathed word. So Father, reach into our hearts this morning as we listen to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, when I started to prepare for this particular talk today after looking at our reading, there were two things that came immediately to the forefront of my mind. One of those is this song. Let's just listen to this for a bit. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land. So some of you may think that's a bit of an odd song that she's had there pop into her head and others might kind of be getting the connection and thinking well yeah I can kind of see where this is going in relation to the passage that we read in John's Gospel today. So we start, we're in Jerusalem, people are there visiting for the Passover feast. So the Passover is obviously where the Israelites are thanking and praising God for their deliverance from bondage from the Egyptian people hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years previously. And this is their time to come together and, and remember that. So lots of people probably would have been there um, from all different walks of life and from all over. And the gospel starts today where we see two people from Greece have come and they want to see Jesus. They've obviously heard 
about this Jesus and they want to see him. They approach Philip and say, can we see Jesus? And I guess Philip's not too sure what to do with this. So he goes to Andrew and explains the situation. And together, Andrew and Philip approach Jesus and say that these two people from Greece would like to speak to you. And doesn't that just show you how far and wide that Jesus's message was getting out, how far it was spreading for other people outside of, of that particular Jewish circle were hearing about him. Great that it was spreading. So Jesus's words are different to what we've previously heard him say in John's Gospel. We've heard him say on more than one occasion, my hour has not yet come. It's not my time yet. But straight away, here he says, um, my, my hour has come when the Son of Man will be glorified. So it's quite a change there, a change taking place and happening. And I wonder what those around him would have thought of that whether they understood exactly what he was saying. He then goes on to um, tell them this particular um, parable, if you will, metaphor. He says that unless um, a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And again, I should have imagined that there were some pretty puzzled faces listening to this particular thing that Jesus was saying. So what does he mean? What is he explaining? I think that Jesus is talking about loss and renewal. And I think if we think about it, it runs throughout our whole lives and throughout the world. And we've all experienced loss and renewal, haven't we? It's there. Sometimes it's by the choices that we make and sometimes it happens by chance. It just happens. But either way, it's there. Now, when we're children, we get used to certain routines. We get used to our home life, schooling, the friends that we have, bedtime routines and all the things that go with childhood. When we move into um, our teenage years to becoming an adolescent, we still have those routines, but they're slightly different because we're slightly different. Not only do we have bodily, physical changes, but we also might have different relationships. Um, we might have different kind of schooling. We might go on to college, things like that. So there's changes there. And certainly when we move on into adulthood, masses of changes take place. We might be, get married. We might have children. We certainly take on more responsibility in life and sometimes that brings its, its bad and its good with it. So big changes taking place there. So the world has certainly experienced a lot of changes during this past year. The world has literally been turned upside down and all what's gone on with the pandemic. And I guess some things will never be the same again as a result of that. But all these life changes bring with it roller coasters of emotions and feelings. And there are ups and there are downs. The ups are the feelings of joy, excitement, happiness and love. And the downs are those when we're fearful, when we're anxious about something, when we're angry, when we're frustrated and when we experience loss and grief. And even in nature, we see changes around us. If you look at spring, you see new things growing, tiny buds pushing through the heavy earth to become something. You see colours changing out there on the trees and in flowers and in plants. In the summer, we see that growth continuing. Lots more colour, blossom, warmth. In the autumn, we see things starting to slow down, things getting a bit tired, things becoming frail, and again, changing colour, but this time a little bit duller. And then in the winter, it's certainly cold and the trees are bare. But the thing to remember during the winter is that just around the corner, renewal is coming. It's all gonna burst 
back into life again. Now, thinking about loss and renewal also runs through the Bible. And obviously the people that were around Jesus at that time, listening to him speak, would have known the scriptures and kind of would have understood where his story was going, where what he was saying was going. So if we look at those things that run throughout the Bible where there's loss um, and renewal there, if you think about innocence that was lost, so that perhaps consciousness might grow. If you look at Abraham becoming Abraham and leading a great nation and becoming a huge blessing to all nations, all families across the earth. Even Jesus' disciples left their families, left their homes and their way of life to start a new life with Jesus. Everywhere there is loss and there is renewal dying and rising it's what we think of in our baptism and when we declare our faith so back to this particular time so there was lots of farming going on um, in and around Jerusalem at that time lots of agriculture and things like that so Jesus was using the grain as an example because it was a language that he knew the people there at that time would understand could relate to and that's the amazing and wonderful thing that Jesus did and does today he meets us exactly where we are and exactly where we're at in our lives so that we can understand he doesn't want us to not understand he wants us to understand what he's trying to say to us so in this particular time he was using the language that they would that you know people around at that time would would get it would see what he was saying so he was talking about this grain falling. It had to fall into the earth so that that particular old grain would die and sprout new seeds, would spread new seeds. So he's talking about us and what happens if we stay the same, if we don't change, if we don't let go of our old lives and become more like him, then how can we grow? How can we spread? We become the grain that hasn't died when we do that. We don't start this new life. So Jesus is saying that what we need to do is let go of the things in our life today that hold us into this single seed grain that stop us from spreading. So what is it that you feel that maybe you need to let go of today? Perhaps it's things like um, resentment, anger, disappointment or fear. It could be guilt, the need to be right all the time or searching for approval all the time. When we don't or can't let go of these things, it stops us from seeing Jesus, from truly seeing Jesus. Seeing Jesus isn't a spectator sport, it's a way of life, it's, it's, a, it's how we follow him, it's a truth to be embodied, a life to live. It's being that grain of wheat that falls into the ground and yes it dies, the old seed dies, but then that new seed will bear much fruit because of that. That's where we see Jesus. Letting go isn't always easy and God knows this, we're human and we have human weaknesses. But when we do start to strive to let go of those things that hold us back, that's when God works within us and he is with us to help us to do that. And that's when we can start to see ourselves and reflect on what we're becoming and the life that we've left behind. And it's where we start to see Jesus in his glory. Jesus knew where he was going. He says this in our reading today. He was moving towards the cross. He was troubled. He knew the pain, the suffering and the death that was about to come. But he also knew where it would lead and how it would change the world. And he knew that the Father was with him. He knew that the hour was near. My hour has come, he said. 
it would glorify the Father and it would glorify the Son. Glorify my name, he says to his Father. And God answers him and says for everyone there to hear, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. Jesus is going to be lifted high and when he is lifted on the cross the whole world will see Jesus, see him for who he is. The world will know why this had to happen and they'll see him glorified. We all share in Jesus' resurrection and rise into life. It brings growth and without inward change the message spreads far and wide. So finally, you remember that I said to you at the beginning of this talk that there were two things that popped into my head when I was preparing. And the first one was the song. And I'm hoping you're kind of guessing where that went now, lifting Jesus high. He's a banner that flies across the world. He's glorified. So the second is this. As I was praying, I heard God speaking to me and speaking very clearly. And I believe that this message is for all of us. So I wrote this message down and I'm going to read it out for us all now. This is what I heard God say to me. Those who my son, who saw my son, believed. Those who have not seen need to hear. Unplanted seed withers and dies. Strong seed multiplies. My son was born for your salvation. In him there is life and life in abundance. In him there is truth. How powerful is that? Those who saw my son believed. Those who have not seen him need to hear. And that's where you and I come in. So brothers and sisters, let's allow our grain to fall and to change. Let's invite God to renew us. And let's glorify Jesus' name by spreading his love all around so that others will see him. People will see the difference in us, in how we act, in what we say, in what we do. And I pray that people will come to us and say, can we see Jesus? Amen. Thank you for those words of encouragement, Lee. We're now going to move on to our affirmation of our faith. And the words are going to be on the screen. So let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And Debbie is now going to bring us our prayers. Lord of Lent, we thank you for coming into our lives. As we gather together remotely, in faith, bless us as we prepare for Easter. Lord of Lent, renew our lives. We pray for our leaders that they respect the people they govern. Please help them to govern for the majority of people and to be caring while they do so. Lord of Lent, renew our lives. We pray for our church to continue to be a beacon of light within this sad 
time. Ensure that they can be inclusive to all who wish to come to faith. We pray for the head of our church, the Queen, as she continues to be a servant in your name. Lord of Lent, renew our lives. We pray for all who are still working within the turmoil of this year. Please bless them as they continue to work to our, our aims. Show them that we are grateful for them that they have provided the care we need. We pray that the care continues and that they also are able to get rest and respect. Lord of Lent, renew our lives. Lord, we ask for support for those in ill health, whether physical or emotional. We specifically pray for those that are still waiting for important treatment and hope that they don't have to wait any longer. We pray that your peace is offered to them and accepted by all who need it. Lord of Lent, renew our lives. We pray for those who have had huge changes in their lives that have been quite scary. They may be stressed and worried for the future. Please walk beside them so that they can get to the aim of everyone to live a peaceful and happy life. Lord of Lent, renew our lives. We pray for all those who are at present grieving. Show them that, that we are thinking of them. Show them the light that is there for them to take. Lord of Lent, renew our lives. We pray for our families, our friends and ourselves. That we can continue to be healthy and safe. Show us how to continue your work on earth. Show us how to work within your, the, your teachings. Let us grow in strength. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your dear Son, Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. And we now have our peace. Good morning to you from my home to yours as we share in this time of Holy Communion together. Thank you to Penny, Kenny, Lee and Debbie for sharing in the Ministry of Leading Our Worship this morning. I wanted to give time to respond um, to the word today. Uh, let's just spend a moment before we receive communion, just giving space for the Holy Spirit to show us where God might be calling us to respond. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the word given to us today. Come fill us afresh, Lord. Just as we were beginning um, to pray, just this, the reminder of um, what Lee was talking about with being a seed um, and just the sense that someone feels uh, particularly in darkness at this time. And um, if it may well be this, this picture of a seed resonates with you today and maybe the Lord uh, wants uh, to bring just some clarification that sometimes when we're planted, it feels dark. In that time um, when a seed is planted and waiting to to multiply, to grow and to germinate. Um, that might well be what you feel at this time. And perhaps um, the Lord is wanting to just um, bring that clarification. That doesn't mean he's not there and he's not at work. 
so Lord, if that is uh, for anybody particularly today, I pray that they will be able to receive that encouragement that you are at work in their lives. Thank you, Jesus, that you call us to hear your word and respond. That you call us to be like a seed, willing to give our lives, to be renewed and to grow. Lord, help us to glorify you in our lives. Holy Spirit, fill us afresh that our lives might reflect the good news and glorify God. In Jesus' name, Amen. So as we continue in our service, we greet one another with Christ's peace. And I encourage you to do this where you are, whether that is with your household who are with you, uh, whether that's with people who are commenting online. Um, let's greet one another. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord always be with you and also with you. Let's share a sign of peace with one another. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, 
We are one body because we all share in one bread. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now we come to a time of spiritual communion and if we, as we join in that together there'll be some words and prayers for you to join in with on the screen. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others as you were the servant of all and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your dear Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you. If you have responded to God for the first time recently, and you'd like to explore, explore faith further, or you would like support at this time, please do private message us or use the contact details on our Facebook page and we'd love to hear from you and love to be in contact with you. And as part of our worship to God, we do give an offer at Tree. If you'd like to know more about how you can financially support the work of St Thomas, and you'd like to give, please do follow the link in the description. And now we're going to worship God in singing our final hymn. So again, we're going to go back to our music group.
Thank you for being with us and for joining us at St Thomas Church today as we've worshipped at home together. And now we're just going to end with the blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>